Hello everyone, welcome to Just In Case You Missed It, the Sunday edition of Chasing the Impossible. I'm your host, Derek Floyd. As always, I've got a great Chasing the Impossible segment from the archive, one that I know you're going to enjoy. But before you do, let me remind you, the new content comes out every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. So make sure you're checking that out. And as always, of course, join us here on Sundays at 5 p.m., 2 p.m. Pacific. Now, today's interview was one that I was looking forward to for so long, and when I finally got to meet him, he was super humble and super chill. He's the award-winning producer for people like Drake, Eminem, Rihanna, you name it, he's been there. And he's got Grammys to prove it. But not only that, he's a super kind guy who's got great knowledge and great insight. But I think you're really going to enjoy this one. Grab a friend, make a phone call, make sure everybody's watching the replay of this incredible producer. His name is Super Dupes. Let's check it out. Hello, everyone. Derek Floyd here, Beautiful Now Podcast, back again with a new segment of our Chasing the Impossible series. We've got a great young man on the other end here who's a dear friend of mine who just happens to be a Grammy Award winning producer <laughs> who's worked with the likes of Drake and so on and so forth. I'll have him tell you a little bit more about that. Uh, his name is Super Dupe. Soups, you there, man? Yeah, I'm here, yo. What's up? How you doing, Derek? Man, so glad to have you just talking to the subscribers today. It's uh, always a blessing to see you, and I know you're always working hard. So for you to take a few minutes to talk with us, I really do appreciate it. Absolutely. What you want to know? What you want to know? Tell me. <laughs> well, you know, it's chasing the impossible. We try to tell people or share stories to encourage people to let them know that whatever they're dreaming for, they can accomplish as well, just like you have. And uh, as we've talked many times in the past, you're a multi Grammy Award winner, meaning you know you've won quite a few. What are some of the artists that you've worked with along the way? Um, I've worked with um, Drake, Rihanna, Bruno Mars, Eminem, John Legend, yeah. <laughs> um, Shakira. Wow, so just just a few people. Just a, just a few, just a couple. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. With that kind of success, I know you've had ups and downs, and we'll talk a little bit about that story, but uh, we just want to recognize that it takes a lot of effort to get to that type of uh, success, and we want to kind of go back a little bit and tell, talk to them about where you started from, like where are you from, and how did you get to, uh, to get kicking into music? Well, first of all, I'm Chinese, but I was born in Jamaica. So I'm, <laughs> what a, uh, does that match? I don't, <laughs> hello. Well, well, I'm talking, you know, Jamaica's motto is out of many one people. So it's yes. very multicultural. So, okay. Okay. It, it, so I moved here when I was very young. Mm -hmm. um, and then my brothers were into the music industry, which they were DJs. And then I started my career as a DJ from a very oh. young age. Okay. okay. Ended up ended up on Power ninety six. Yeah. Um, at thirteen, started producing when I was sixteen, and here I am now. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you've been doing it for how many years now? Over so it's sixteen. Uh, okay. I'm not gonna tell uh, you age. I won't do it to you. I won't do it. <laughs> thirty years. <laughs> but you've been, been doing, doing it for a while. For a while, thirty years. So. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. Uh, with that in mind, you know, starting from so long ago and, and making music now, um, has music always been the dream? Was that the thing you originally thought, this is what I want to do with my life? Um, I would say I wanted to do music um, since I was probably, I knew from I was like nine years old that I wanted to make music my life, my career. Wow. Wow. Against against everybody else's wishes, which is my family, <laughs> like my parents and stuff like that. Because yeah. um, one of the things that um, we discussed before was um, people only base whatever they could do on their own personal limitations. So basically, if they can't do it, they automatically assume that you can't either. Even though you say, mom, I'm different. But it's like, they're just, in their eyes, music business is just not a way to live. It's like, you should go to school. We brought you here to America from Jamaica. So 
go go to school now and go fulfill the American dream. But they didn't realize that I could fulfill the American dream this way as well. That's so true. So true. People's vision of what's possible is so limited. You know, they only exactly. see through a certain lens. And it takes people like yourself to break through that lens to show them there's way more out there. They can accomplish anything if that's what God put them on this earth to do. So thanks for even putting that into light. Um, when we talk about chasing the impossible, I always, I always kind of identify there are kind of five steps that walk through accomplishing something impossible. The first one's always to identify and clarify what that thing is. And for you, you identified earlier was music. Always was, right? Yes, exactly. Um, from I, I started out as a singer, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> a singer? Get out. Yeah, I, I actually can sing, but <laughs> the thing is, is I also had to be honest with myself because mm. I was like, at the time when I was a singer, I, I wanted to be in a group with my cousin. But then I looked in the mirror one day and I'm just like, who want to see Jackie Chang sing? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I no, love but, that. But, but it's not even just that, really. It's, um, I knew I wanted to do music for a living, but the goal was the same, but the plan had to change. And I just, re I just um, that's why I'm talking about being honest with yourself. It's just about recognizing what you're great at and what you could excel at. Because sometimes people want to be a singer, they want to be a producer, but probably that's not your calling in the music. And so as long as you're in the music, like say for instance, you, I know that you're a talented artist, singer, but you're calling, you work in IK. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, that, yeah. and that's still the music business. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. me, I wanted to be a singer, then I went to be a DJ, and then now I'm a producer. So that <laughs> yeah. was my calling. Sure, you know sure, I mean? yeah. Well, that's great to, to talk, uh, kind of identify that. And as people start to understand what their dreams are, what their impossible is, to clarify what's possible for them makes a big difference. And you were able to walk through the process in your mind and say, well, maybe I didn't, I'm not, maybe I'm not singing wasn't the one. Maybe I, but music was my impossible. So I need to stay in this lane somehow, some way. So you figure out a way to navigate that, which makes a big difference in your success. Um, exactly. I, I think when we talk about the next step, because you've already identified what your, your impossible was, the next step in any kind of process is to find the fuel to get through that place, to, to find that inner something that keeps you going, because there'll be times when it's not easy, and you need something that you can fuel, fuel yourself up with to get creative or to move forward. What was the fuel behind your impossible? What made you say, I can do this, I'm going to keep going no matter what? Um, my fuel was for one love, like I'm talking, it's just, I just love music and I just wanted to make sure that I'm going to do it regardless of what anybody said. So that was my fuel. And, and, um, what was also my fuel is when people told me that I couldn't do it. So <laughs> not only to prove them wrong, but over, over more myself, I wanted to show myself that I could do it. You know what I'm saying? And the resistance is always a good thing. People don't realize that. And I'm learning more and more. The more no's you get, the more fuel you get to go forward with what you're trying to do. If, if well, you use it properly, you know what I mean? Well, well, not everybody is like that um, because a lot of people are, there are certain weaknesses about it too. Mm. Like if you're, if you're going into it for the wrong reasons, then you're not going to stick with it. So True. if True. you don't absolutely love it, you're not going to stick with it. If you're going into it for money or the glory or what have you, might as well you just leave because you will never make it. Ah, well spoken. Well spoken. Wrong, wrong motives will destroy it every time. You know? Exactly. He he heaven forbid, even with wrong motives, you could reach the impossible thing and still be unhappy with it because the motives were wrong. Exactly. <laughs> and exactly. How, how many rich folk do we know that are miserable? Eh? Oh, oh, probably most of them. Miserable, miserable. So you go, <laughs> okay, this isn't working. You know, this isn't working. So we completely understand that. Um, so then you said, okay, I've, I've got my fuel. I'm going to keep going with this. Then you got to do the homework to make sure this thing happens, whether it be studying something, learning a new skill. What kind of homework did you have to put in place to really well, learn how to do the music industry? Uh, well, for one, the, the, the love of it is what led me to the knowledge Hmm. And from the knowledge that out of the love, you notice how much I use love because mm -hmm. you have to love it. Yeah. Um, 
And then I learned every single thing about it um, just by practicing, um, trial and error, just whatever. I, I put my more than 10,000 hours in. Anything that <laughs> I, remember, I wanted. I remember that phrase, 10,000 hours and something makes you a, a master at it or something like that. What's that phrase? I'm, I'm talking, I, th I think that's just a number. Um, it, it's just how much you love it and how passionate you're about it. But the most important thing is to like never give up. If that's what you're passionate about, you will stop at anything. You won't stop at anything to achieve your goals. All right, man. So, you know, you've talked about how you grinded it out. Um, you know, you've put in the work, put in the time, you've learned your craft. But in the trail of success, even when you have your fuel to get there and you grind it out, there's a time when you fall. Not everything works together perfectly. Not everything flows. Sometimes you got to be prepared to fail. So was there a time in your, in your walk, in your planet, where you, you fell off and thought, maybe, not, maybe I shouldn't do this, maybe this isn't what I want to do? And how'd you come through it? Oh, many times. Um, many times um, I'm talking, I was down on my luck. Um, I've been rich and broke so many times, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even tell you how many times. Um, <laughs> but it's my passion and my love. My passion and my love that always picked me back up. And the reason why plan A had to work, this was plan A because there was never a plan B. So I just went all the way in and you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I basically from what we were talking about earlier, I gave it no room for failure. So yes, there's a lot of times that I felt like I wanted to give up. A lot of times I felt like I wasn't good enough. A lot of times, you know, like it's just the devil speaking to you to throw you off. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, yeah. And I just, sometimes I gave into it. But a lot of times I just picked myself right back up and kept it moving mm -hmm. so i think i want people to understand that they sometimes they think it's just going to be a smooth ride and in any level of success there are times when you fail and you have to be prepared for that failure by knowing that it's coming and more importantly learning from the failure that you have whatever mistakes and situations that come across your path there's a learning process in there. you're supposed to be taking lessons all the time life is nothing but a big note taking session you know what i mean you're 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 figuring out what works and what doesn't and operating the next a different way the next time, you know? So Well part part of the reason why you have to actually do your homework, which um, we spoke about earlier, is being prepared for all of these things. Um it's never a smooth ride with just anything. It's called life. I'm mm -hmm. talking um you're gonna have the haters, you're gonna have the naysayers. You're going to have just a lot of things, but the most important things is just not to get into your head because we are who are responsible for holding us back. Uh, apart from acts of nature, it's our fault. You know what I mean? So if you're down, pick yourself back up. Who you expect to go pick yourself up for you? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you, you so cued something that a lot of people don't just realize. A thing go ahead. Yeah, I was, was going to say, you, you, cued, you cued something a lot of people don't realize is that you own what happens in your life. You know, yeah, yes. now you, everything that happens to you isn't specifically what you've done, but you own how you respond to it. And that's yeah. what I get people to realize. You know, if, if crap happens, crap happens to everybody. Yes. But how you respond yes. to it determines how you walk through that thing in your yeah. life. So you can be prepared to fail on certain things. But if you know how to handle that failure and you're able to maneuver it properly, failure can be success. It can move you through. It can teach you so much. Yes. Yes, and, uh, and that's why earlier we spoke about love. If you don't have the love for it or the passion, you're not going to stick it through. That's why with any other motive apart from love in it, you're going to fail. You wow. know what I mean? And it's the same thing with walking with Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, if mm -hmm. if there's no you, some people just go to church and and follow Jesus, and they say, "All right, cool. I'm gonna be a good person. I'm gonna go to church every once in a while." Mm -hmm. I'm talking. It, it, you're not going to go to heaven by just works alone. You got to have faith. You know what I mean? So that's basically it. <laughs> Most successful people, it's not that they haven't failed. They were just willing to fail more, ah and then they picked themselves back up and kept it moving. That's so well spoken. That's basically it. Well spoken, well spoken. And the fact that 
part of your fuel is you found faith in the midst of where you were going. You gave your life to Jesus and found a whole new level of fuel to get you where you are. So another uh, uh, part to the equation, uh, not everyone understands that part. And we don't push that part of that on everyone else, but we always recognize that, you know, God is, is our, our father, our fuel, our, our due north, so to speak, mm-hmm. our point north. And it gives us the fuel to do what we do. So giving it up to you, God, always. Um, last thing we'll kind of. Always. Always. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good, right? <laughs> That's what we're. God is good. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, last thing we'll just kind of curtail it is, is after you've identified what you want to do, after you've found the fuel to get it done, after you've did the homework and grinded it out, and you've tried to fall sometimes. You really have to have a trust for the process. You have to trust this process because it is a process. You do this whole entire process multiple times in life. And I think, was there a time when you felt like, okay, I get it now. I trust this process. I'm doing this right. Um, I don't think I, I ever got to that part where I'm just like, yeah, I'm, I'm all the way there. I don't think in my life, especially, I, I don't think I'm ever like, I all always want to learn I always want to grow because the minute you're content is the minute you stop growing mm. you know what I mean but True that. do I feel that I mean I even got here yet no I still have it you know what I mean um mm-hmm. it's just I always want to learn more do more grow more yeah it's called growth and I don't think we should ever stop growing till the day we die um as much as I've accomplished in it everything i still feel there's a, a little more room for me to accomplish more but apart from that um it just you just got to keep grinding man keep grinding until you get to wherever you're going to because no nothing is nobody's fault everything is your fault even if you allow this person in your life that did whatever it is to you it's still your fault because you should have had the discernment to know that that person was wrong but guess what <laughs> You, what's wrong? It happened. Brush your, brush your shoulder off. Keep it moving. Come on, Jay Z. Brush your shoulders off. Come on now. There you go. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I definitely agree. I, I think you know there are times when things happen to you that are out of your control, but and discernment is something earned and learned. It's not automatic, so you don't want to make someone feel like, oh, your discernment is off. It's your fault. It's definitely something you, you grow into. Yes, but at yes. the same time, it definitely, once you start to figure out people that are in your life that are not good for you, and you keep them in your life, that's, that's making bad decisions too. And you have to accept what comes from those things and be prepared to walk Absolutely. that through. So I agree 100%. It's definitely a tough call. But trust the process and being able to continue to keep grinding. Not, never feel like you arrived. You're always learning, always growing always getting to the next stage. It's definitely the way to do it. So, man, I thank you for taking a few minutes to just hang with us at Chasing the Impossible. Obviously, again, you've done multiple things and you're always working, always grinding. Um, I think people that are listening to the podcast today will say, hey, if he can do it, I can do it. And uh, if there's anything you could share with them, just as a last parting, parting idea, parting gift, what would you say to them to tell them to keep going? Well, well, just remember that it starts with love. So it's just think about the why you're doing it. Why are you doing it? So the reason why I do it is for the love. And mm-hmm. it's just remember that what to make a living out of it, the money is just a byproduct of you doing a great job. You know yes. what I mean? So put there in your homework, it. love it, always be humble, mm-hmm. always be willing to learn and Honestly, the minute you feel like you arrived and you've just got the ego about it, is the minute you stop growing. You know what I mean? So that's basically it. Well spoken, my friend. Well spoken. Again, thank you for spending the time with us here, Chasing the Impossible. We appreciate you, man. And we send blessings and love to your family and, and hope that you continue to do well. And to everyone out there, subscribers, thank you for taking a few minutes to talk with us. We hope you enjoyed this segment. I will be seeing you soon with more Chase the Impossible on the Beautiful Now podcast. Take care, everyone. God bless. Be careful out there. Stay safe. Stay safe. Take care.